The state of this conference has been an absolute booming success through the first two days of the conference. I'm incredibly proud of everything that we've accomplished and I'm incredibly proud of everyone and their accomplishments in media, in the legislature, in the courts, and I had the privilege to stop by in NIF and also in Leadership Corps. Anyone else, I'm hoping to make my rounds over the rest of the course of the weekend. So far, I've seen nothing but success and hard work and just the drive to make this a memorable model assembly. Okay, to start out with, uh, something that's become a reoccurring theme this weekend is gun violence, gun control, and mental health screenings. In light of the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting, we're still, as a nation and as a state, mourning the loss of every single victim in that elementary school. I believe that it is time to implement a mental health screening step in the situations of applying to own a firearm. How would people go about getting a gun then? When you register to own a gun, it would be a step that was taken there. You would get the paperwork to take the test later and then come back once that was filled out and you passed. The flat tax. I understand that one of the flat tax bills has now failed in the Senate. We believe that it's fiscally responsible as an administration, as an assembly, to pass a flat tax. Right now in the tiered system, people with $275,000 or more are the upper tier of the tax payment, and they pay a 7.85% income tax. I know one of the proposed flat tax rates was uh, 4%. So, you know, it's not rocket science to imagine the massive budget cuts that would occur if we were to simply cut the amount of money they're spending on taxes nearly in half to 4%. Before you consider voting for such a bill, think of the programs that we'd have to cut because the cuts would be astronomical and they would not be fun for anybody involved. I was sitting in on a committee where there was a bill on banning pennies and eliminate the usage in the state of Minnesota. The fact is it costs more to produce a penny than the penny is actually worth and so the United States of America is losing large amounts of money in the production of pennies. I think it's a brilliant idea. I think that it should be implemented in the United States of America. The federal mint is completely outside of our jurisdiction and we cannot and will not sign a bill that will allow us to restrict the federal mint, which isn't even possible. So before you vote for that, think about the fact that it is simply impossible. Elia, why did you change your platform on marijuana? You know, there's been a lot of talk about that so far today and yesterday. Um, originally, I was in support of legalizing marijuana for medicinal purposes because it's a, been a proven thing that pain can be somewhat relieved in terminal cases of cancer and other illnesses through the use of medicinal marijuana. However, I saw in Colorado the passage of the legalized marijuana for recreational purposes and I found it to be a somewhat misunderstood bill. As I read some of the bills this year I discovered that they're incredibly well worded, that they allowed for restrictions and control of the substance rather than just legalizing it across the board. You can only use it by the time you're 18 or when you're 21. Some had a two ounce limit. Most didn't allow you to operate vehicles while under the influence. All of those things were factors in me deciding that, indeed, it would be a thing to consider, legalizing marijuana for recreational purposes in the state of Minnesota. And so, we have changed our opinion and are now in favor of the recreational use of marijuana in the state of Minnesota, along with the use of medicinal marijuana.